Hello again, Pathways friends, and welcome to day four of our salute to the construction trades and artists who build things for a living. And today, instead of showing you a step-by-step -step how to do a project, myself and my lovely assistant, my daughter Amelia, who is here semi by force, um, are going to be issuing you a challenge. We're gonna do something that we do in our garage relatively frequently. We're going to use the scrap wood challenge. So go ahead and bring up something that we've built before with the scrap wood challenge. And you can see right here, this is a birdhouse that we built a couple of years ago and Amelia did a really nice job of painting. So you can put that down. Um, so we are just going to take some scrap wood pieces, some stuff that we have laying in our garage. This is a piece I cut off of something else. We may use some of the pieces that I had left yesterday, from yesterday um, when we built squirrel picnic tables. But no plans today. Nothing figured out exactly what we're going to do. We're going to show you some of the machines and some of the machine's safety to do that. And then we're going to fast forward through a lot of things and show you a lot of our build and our scrap wood challenge that we are issuing to you. I want you to go to your garage with an adult, with an adult, with an adult. See? Child, adult, child, adult. Supervision. Go to your garage, go to your workshops, go to your basements, go anywhere. And I am issuing you the scrap wood challenge. What can you build with scrap wood? All right? Okay. So first step is a great one that you can get your assistance help with. We're going to take our piece of wood and I'm going to lay it out here on the miter saw stand. Not going to use the saw just yet because the first thing that we have got to do is we've got to get this measured off. So we're going to measure off uh, what we're planning on doing, do a couple of measurements, get that all ready and set for cutting. And measuring is an absolutely perfect thing for your assistant to do. So assistant... Here's your measuring tape, and we're gonna get ready to do some measurements, and I'm gonna speed that up for you guys. So we've measured out a little bit some of the first things. We're not, we're kind of planning this as we go. Remember, no plans. So we've decided to measure out three different sections. And we've been using our framing square to go ahead and make some nice straight lines and now we're going to do a little bit of cutting almost forgot to say it wasn't going to do it that's why i remembered before i'd started my cuts always remember the most important safety rule is to wear these your safety glasses so i've got got my backup pair of safety glasses because memes is wearing mine from yesterday so safety glasses on now we're ready to cut So thinking and planning as we go, what we've decided to do is take our three pieces that we've cut and we've got a base, a bottom here, and we've got two sides. But this looks awful long. I mean, these are scrap was like, this is almost 18 inches long. And I think we're gonna cut it back a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is measure what this distance is right here, cut that off of each one of these pieces and we're gonna use those little pieces for the um for the front and the back so one of the things that we find when we're designing like this is we had designed to make a pretty square box and it go in like this but we decided what would be even cooler than that is to make this look like a little bit more like a house. So we're redesigning on the fly. And that means that this is probably a scrap piece of wood now. And we're going to recut some pieces and we're going to make like a little triangular piece here. So more measuring, more cutting to get our pieces right.
So now we're gonna have Amelia grab all of the pieces that we've cut and move over to the skill saw and just use that as a base. We're not cutting anything there today. Um, but she's just gonna lay out what we're building. Have you guys guessed yet? Have we told you yet? So Amelia's gonna lay that out for you. And I may need to go in there and help because I think she's gonna need some extra hands. So if you haven't yet guessed, we're working on a birdhouse and we've got a couple of more pieces to cut. We need to go ahead and we're going to cut the roof for this side. We're going to cut a roof for here and then we got some other things that we're going to do and she's got some additions she wants to make. So let's do a little bit more measuring. We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do there and I think if we've done this correctly. I think more eight inch pieces just like we did. I love it when the measurements work out the same. So I decided I was going to show you this cut because this is a new feature, another feature you haven't seen of the compound miter saw is what I want to do is I want to get these two pieces of the roof to like meet in a point at the middle. So I don't want them to be straight on square cuts. I want them to be in an angle. So what I'm going to do, I've got it cut off and marked, but the beauty of the compound miter saw is just with a few adjustments here in the back you can unlock that and it lets you slide it over to the side. So what I'm gonna do is it's got a little gauge back here is I'm going to read the little marks over here and I'm gonna turn it to a 45 degree cut right there. <clears throat> and I'm going to make that lock it in place. Maybe, it's a little bit difficult to get to back there. There we are. So I've got that locked in place and I'll make the cut at an angle and then these two pieces will meet very nicely. Okay, so we've got everything cut out nicely now and even off camera I messed up a couple of cuts. I had to go back. I had to like angle these cuts so the roof fits nicely. That's the beauty of doing this on camera is you don't get to see everything that I make the mistakes that I'm making. <laughs> And I won't get to see all the mistakes that you're making. I do want to see your final project. What are you coming up with scrap wood? So we're almost ready for assembly, but the last thing that we're going to do is make the hole in this before we um, drill it. We could drill it afterwards, but it's going to be a whole lot easier to do this now. So if you are making a birdhouse like we are, there are charts online that you can find out just how big of a hole that you need to make four different kinds of birds that may you may want to house. So we're going to check out one of those charts really quickly and then we are going to find something circular um, somewhere. Oh, one of the benefits of having a disorganized garage. If in fact this is the right dimension circle. and this tube of caulk right here is a circle that's just under two inches. So we're gonna check out our chart, and if that's a good dimension, we can just put it right here, trace around it, and then we'll find a drill bit, and we're gonna use the drill press and show you that to make this hole. Okay, so we've gone ahead and marked the spot where we're gonna get our hole. We've looked up online and found out that we wanna use a two inch hole. So we've got a two inch hole saw bit here, and we're gonna take that over to the drill press. Now my drill press is back over here in the corner because I don't use it a ton. I've got clamped down to the workplace a piece of wood that I can saw into so I don't go all the way through and into the middle of my bit. I gotta put this in the drill. This is called a chuck is what the thing on that holds the bit on the drill is called and I'm gonna turn that and turn it back some more. Then to tighten it up I'm gonna use this little cool thing called a chuck key and turn it and make it super tight. All right, put that down to the side, get ready and get everything all lined up and ready. 
I am again wearing my safety glasses. I wasn't wearing them in the last shot because uh, we were between things, but let's go ahead and turn the drill on. Let it warm up, get there, exactly. This one's got like a little laser on it, so it shows me exactly where I'm gonna be drilling. And I'm gonna come down to the spot and just easily let the drill do the work. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit of time and we're gonna go back and forth several times. Slows down and when it slows down like that, we let it go. Let it up again. And we have finished, knocked the dust off got a very nice perfectly round little hole in there all right so one more thing that we're gonna do and we're gonna go back to the drill press but Amelia just changed up our design after we've got a hole she decided we needed a little perch and we're looking around for something round and wooden that we can use and what we found was this we found a little piece of a wooden arrow that we'd broken off of before and I was getting ready to use this end right here and I was just like oh we'll just use that like a dowel and put it in well, Amelia thinks it'll look really cool if having this out there, if we go ahead and we use the arrow that still has the fletching. So we're gonna cut this part of the arrow off and we're going to mount it into here so the birds will have a perch to land on and get in there. So we're gonna cut this and then we're gonna um, drill a hole in there for it. All right, so checking it out, I've already gone ahead and cut off the piece of the arrow. Now I'm gonna take it over here and look at my drill bits. And what I'm gonna do is take a drill bit out at a time and lay this end up against it to see if they match. And this one's too small. It's not gonna make a hole that's big enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to another one. Not gonna try and lay it pointy end to pointy end, but flat end to flat end. That one's just about perfect right there. So I'm gonna take that, chuck that up in my drill, just like we did before. Keep the piece of wood clamped to the base. Lay that down. Don't forget to tighten it up with my chuck key that I put over here. Tighten that up and grab a piece of wood. Gonna go ahead and get ready to drill where we want that perch to be. And I may have to move my clamp over a little bit here because I think it's keeping me from getting exactly where I want to be. Move that clamp a little bit. There we go. Nice and centered. Ready to go. That one goes a whole lot easier than that big hole saw. And we've already got a nice hole for our perch that we'll be able to use in assembly. Let's take all our wood pieces and go down to the floor for a flat surface. Okay. Now we have to teach, take each piece and glue and nail it individually. Okay, so we're gonna stop right there. You can see that we did not put one side of the house on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna screw that one on with the drill instead of nail it. So um, in case we need to clean the inside of the birdhouse between birds. So there you have it little bit of glue left at the end. Got to glue up the perch. And put that perch 
just right in its little hole there. Nice fit because we matched it so well. Few gaps that we're gonna have to caulk. Gotta let some glue dry. Then Amelia's gonna take it on the task of painting this up. We're not gonna keep that on today's video. Um, we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So um, here you go. There's your challenge. Scrap wood challenge. What can you make? We made ourselves a birdhouse. I want to see what you made. Go ahead and email me those pictures to david.oneal at orange.k12.nc.us or always you can text them directly to my Google Voice number which is going to show up on the screen here in just a second. Join me again tomorrow for day five of construction week where we're going to do a salute to yet another construction type artisan who uh i'm not going to tell you i don't think i'll let you see that tomorrow so join me then Thank mm -hmm. you.